Now, the perfect fluids that we are going to be working with evolve according to a certain wonderful set of equations. Now, before we get to that, these equations involve a notation that we saw a long time ago. This is something called the material derivative. Do you remember back when, oh, I think it was in volume two, chapter six, we learned about this as a consequence of the chain rule? Well, let's remember. Let's say you're given some field, smiley, that depends on time, t, and space, x, where those points in space are also changing in time. That means x is a function of time. Then, if I want to take the derivative of smiley with respect to t, something called the material derivative, or sometimes the total derivative, is a special version of the chain rule that measures the rate of change of particles moving along flow lines as x changes with t. And what this is, is partial smiley, partial t, the partial with respect to time, plus the partial derivative of smiley with respect to location, x, times partial x, partial t. Now, of course, this is nothing more than the chain rule. If you go back to volume two, look at what we did there, you'll see it was an easy consequence of the chain rule. Now, in the case of a perfect fluid, this smiley is going to be the velocity one form field. That's the thing that we're going to be evolving over time. And that evolution is going to be encapsulated in something called the Euler equations. Yep, it's that guy again. What are the Euler equations for a perfect fluid? They are d alpha v dt, the material derivative of the velocity one form field is minus dh, where h is just some function. Now, what this says is that the material derivative of the velocity field is a gradient. A gradient of what? We'll talk about that later. The second part of the Euler equation says that the flux two-form field, phi sub v, has derivative equal to zero. That means that the divergence vanishes, that this is a volume-preserving fluid. Okay, those are the two components of the Euler equations. And we still don't have a good feel for what that gradient on the right is. It does have a precise meaning in terms of pressure, in terms of density, but that's physics. We're not going to go there. We're not going to talk about it. If you want to learn more, you might want to take a course in fluid dynamics. For now, what we're going to do is work with these equations and maybe try to figure out a simple example. So let's get going on that. Let's consider the following vector field, a vector field that's going to be time independent. V, the velocity field, is given by 2 cosine y i plus sine x j plus quantity 2 sine y plus cosine x k. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is convert that velocity vector field into a one form field alpha sub v. I'm going to do that by simply replacing i, j, and k with dx, dy, and dz, respectively. Okay, so is this a perfect fluid? Does it satisfy the Euler equations? Well, let's, let's check. Let's start computing derivatives. The material derivative of alpha v with respect to t is going to have two components to it, as we've seen. The first is the partial with respect to t, and then the second is going to be the partial with respect to x times partial x, partial t. Okay, well, that first term, that's not going to be a problem. This velocity field doesn't have any time dependence, so that first term is precisely zero. But that second term, I mean, what is partial alpha v partial x? Well, let's think. This is really going to be a matrix of one forms. I'm going to have to take the partial of alpha v with respect to x, then with respect to y, then with respect to z. That first partial derivative is going to be cosine x dy minus sine x dz. 
Okay, well, that kind of makes sense. What happens when I take the partial with respect to y? Well, let's see. It looks like I've got two terms there as well, and those are going to be what? The first term is going to be 2 cosine y dz, and the second term is going to be minus 2 sine y dx. Now we're not done, we still have to take the partials with respect to z, but I don't see any z terms in there, so that partial is gonna be zero. Okay, that's partial alpha v, partial x. What about partial x, partial t? Well, look, that's just telling you how particles are moving with respect to time. That is nothing more than the velocity field. So I'm going to write out those three components, two cosine y, sine x, and two sine y, plus cosine x. Now I've got a matrix of things times a vector of things. And when I multiply these two together, and the only way I know how, expand out all those terms, I get 2 cosine x cosine y dy minus 2 sine x cosine y dz plus 2 sine x cosine y dz minus 2 sine x sine y dx. Wow, that's kind of a mouthful. Um, but I see those two terms in the middle there that cancel each other out. That means I can simplify this a little bit and get minus two sine x sine y dx plus two cosine x cosine y dy. Now, wait a minute, what am I trying to do? Oh, that's right, I'm trying to show whether or not this is the gradient of some function h or minus h, and I stare at it, I think really hard, and I say, oh, yes, of course, this is the derivative of two cosine x sine y. You can check it. And so my h is going to be minus that, and, and boom, I'm done, that works. We're all good, we've satisfied the other equations. Oh, wait a minute, no, we just did the first part. We also have to check that the divergence is zero. I'll leave that one up to you, it's maybe not so bad. Oh wait, the partial of the first term with respect to x, zero. The partial of the second term with respect to y, also zero. The partial of the third term with respect to z, that's zero too. Aha, yes, the divergence is zero. This is not so bad. But what does it look like? Well, if you plot the flow lines of this field and view it head on, so I'm looking straight down the z-axis, this doesn't look too bad. It looks like everything is sort of flowing in nice, neat, orderly rolls, but if you pan out, zoom out, ooh, it's a little more complicated. Trying to visualize any kind of fluid flow in 3D tends to be a little bit challenging.